In this special presentation, Dr. Kartik Chandran provides his insights on the UN Sustainable Development Goal 6, Clean Water and Sanitation. Dr. Kartik Chandran is a professor in the Department of Earth and Environmental Engineering at Columbia University. He's a member of the Expert Group for Global Wastewater Monitoring for the SDGs under the direction of the World Health Organization and UN Habitat. Dr. Chandran is a MacArthur Fellow as well as a former board member of the Water Environment Federation. Welcome, Kartik. Well, hello, everyone. The two goals which are most uh, closely related to water are SDG 6 and uh, SDG 14. So SDG 6 deals directly with uh, clean water and sanitation. And then SDG 14 deals with uh, life below water. My work was most closely associated with the SDG 6, and that's what I'll be, I'll be focusing on for our discussion today. Okay, so in terms of uh, in terms of SDG six, there are there are different uh, uh, spheres of uh, SDG six. There are different global indicators, and I've tried to capture some of them on this uh, on the slide. Uh, so we have uh, we have within SDG six, uh, we target drinking water, we target sanitation and hygiene, we specifically target wastewater and water quality. Uh, there is also an element of water use and scarcity, water management, which is a bit more around water systems as a whole, and even uh, uh, zooming out a little bit on uh, water and ecosystems. Uh, ultimately, we want, uh, want a systems level perspective in terms of framing the problem, framing the challenge, and addressing the challenge, and that's what SDG 6 really uh, tries to do. On the right-hand side here, under this, in, in this table, I'm also pointing out the different uh, custodial agencies of the United Nations, which are most, which are closely associated with each of the goals and targets. And so here, this is essentially a list uh, uh, of the different uh, custodial agencies within the United Nations. Okay, uh, it's also good to understand uh, the transition that was made from the Millennium Development Goals to the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, essentially, the, within the SDG, uh, there are a lot more uh, specifics with respect to uh, monitoring to, to, to understand progress, to quantify progress. And uh, uh, there, is real, uh, there, there is real specificity with respect to the different water streams as well. So it's not just providing drinking water, it's also uh, uh, safely providing uh, safe drinking water, uh, access to sanitation, safely managed uh, waste streams and so on. So it is understood that we need to put, that we need to provide drinking water to populations. It is very well understood in, well, uh, when I say it is well understood, it was acknowledged as part of the MDG and it's now even more emphasized as part of the SDG that we need to provide clean water associated with very specific indicators uh, of water quality. Now that's where the specificity comes in. It is also very well understood now and acknowledged as part of SDG 6 that we have to put barriers between uh, human beings and, and uh, let's say pathogens or other chemical contaminants that might be present in, in wastewater. So we need to put barriers. That's where uh, safely managed wastewater comes in. It is also understood that sanitation plays a very, very important role in this. And so we're talking about clean water. We're talking about sanitation. We're talking about uh, wastewater treatment and even, and even reuse. When I say reuse, it's not, again, uh, it's not just uh, uh, reuse of water, reuse of wastewater for drinking or, or or other, other objectives, we are even going to the extent of uh, recovering resources from, uh, from streams like uh, fecal sludge uh, to the benefit of, uh, of society as well. So this is all very specifically laid out within the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, okay, we can, we can go further. And so what has come about as, as uh, different countries adopt uh, uh, the, the overall framework offered by, uh, let's say, SDG 6, for instance. This is just a dashboard from, uh, from India, which I think uh, a couple of years old now. Uh, so essentially, it allows us to really visualize uh, what is actually happening in different communities and different countries. So for India, uh, uh, India uh, probably now, its uh, numbers are slightly different, but uh, uh, houses about 18% of the world's population, 4% uh, of the uh, uh, average global runoff uh, into rivers uh, and and the numbers are just staggering again uh, uh, primarily because of the, the high population uh, we have 330 million people uh, who are uh, affected by drought in india this is a really stark reminder of the the abject lack of sanitation services in india 50 percent 
of the rural households in India still defecate out in the open. This is a this is a pretty significant uh, uh, goal for the Indian government to uh, to reduce this reduce this number. Uh, the 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 initiative of providing Indian uh, people with uh, toilets has been has been one of the biggest uh, improvements to the state of sanitation in India, and which was uh, which which was which is now about six six years old now, six years now. Uh, uh, and there are there are other numbers, and I put this uh, put this schematic here just because just to show the scale uh, of of the challenge. But again, the SDGs provide a very good framework to categorize uh, the the challenge, and then uh, based on quantifying uh, the different categories, they also allow us to track progress, which is what the SDGs have done. So the SDGs offer an excellent framework, not just for communities, not just for countries, even from my own perspective, from an educational perspective, it is very good uh, as I teach, uh, let's say next, the, the future generations of environmental scientists and engineers, uh, the SDGs also put help put things in perspective. Why are we, why are we, uh, uh, let's say, creating certain in interventions? Why are we developing certain technologies? Uh, the SDGs really allow us to put things in perspective as well. Uh, there's another uh, fact sheet that I have for uh, Indonesia, I believe, but I, I can I can uh, skip this. Essentially, basically con conveying uh, similar types of uh, uh, stats and information. Okay, now the other thing that that the global populations are facing uh, as it as it pertains to uh, as it pertains to water uh, is the 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 challenge of uh, rapid urbanization. Uh, it is, it is, uh, it is uh, it's quite real now, the, the move of populations all around the world towards urban centers. And this is again data from India. This is uh, uh, kindly provided by the Center for Science and Environment, which is a think tank in uh, New Delhi and provided by Dr. Suresh Rohila. And essentially uh, what, we are, what we are showing here is uh, the, the rapid urbanization here in, in India and in, in many, many, many other countries. So essentially the, 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 the problem is, is as follows. As it is, there is, uh, there is a dearth of water infrastructure in, in many countries, in many, many countries. Uh, when I say water infrastructure, I mean drinking water, wastewater, uh, and, and, and where this is possible, stormwater as well. Uh, and now, uh, the, the, uh, coupled with rapid urbanization, these urban metros, the centers really are, are limited in terms of the services that are that are provided uh, to to its populations, and when it comes to water, this is this is especially acute, and uh, and that's where you see that that stark image that I shared with you. That's where uh, we are seeing, uh, especially uh, uh, especially severe limitations as it comes to uh, as it pertains to uh, provision of clean water and and uh, sanitation services as well. Okay, this is all fine. We recognize. It's this in a fairly qualitative fashion, but uh, till a few years ago, there, there there was really not much in terms of a global coordinated effort, and the effort is probably not very well coordinated even now. But there was hardly anything in terms of uh, addressing the mag or, or even acknowledging and recognizing and quantifying the magnitude of the problem. And again, uh, it uh, the, again the SDGs have provided a framework for us to be able to do this, so we can we can. Uh, uh, we can go now. There are many countries that have created uh, dashboards or data sets which which provide us uh, uh, access to the to what is actually happening on the ground. And until we until and unless we actually know what is going on, any interventions that we design, any technologies that we develop are really really uh, 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 not applicable because they they don't address something that is uh, that is happening that is real and that is happening. Okay, uh, and again, this is just another schematic that shows the uh, just uh, not enough insufficient progress uh, in, in in India, uh, and surely there is uh, there is progress over time, but this is really not sufficient. So here we have uh, uh, the picture as it pertains to water supply, wastewater, and treatment, and uh, over time. And so, okay, the numbers are increasing; they're going in the right direction, but if you still Look at the proportion of wastewater treated. It's really, really, really insufficient. And uh, the other big challenge that, that is now coming to light, even in some parts of the United States, where we do not expect something like this to be uh, happening, is that uh, essentially, if I can summarize what I've seen in many countries, uh, uh, large parts of the population are, populations are not connected to pipes. 
not for drinking water, not for uh, not for wastewater treatment. And essentially, uh, so that's 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 one part of the story. And then we have governments that uh, that come in uh, top down, and they essentially institutionalize uh, the need for improvements. They they mandate improvements. Uh, and essentially, certain improvements are either proposed or, or implemented even. But what are these imp uh, improvements? A lot of these improvements deal with enhancing sewer coverage or putting in treatment enhanced treatment systems on the drinking water side or wastewater side for communities connected to sewers. But what about the populations who are actually not connected to sewers? What about the populations that do not have pipes running into uh, what pipes and taps for drinking water? What, what happens to those communities that don't have pipes that take the sewage out of the communities? And so these communities are essentially, they are invisible to any improvements. And this is what, this is what some of the activities around the SDGs have, has, have actually allowed us to recognize, acknowledge, quantify, and then address. Uh, it's essentially characterizing uh, who's on the network, who's not on the network, what do we need, what do we need? And in many countries around the world, including the US, it is just not possible to tear up existing infrastructure and put pipes. This is just not going to work. And this has led to global realization that we have to absolutely consider uh, uh, non-piped uh, systems for clean water, for, for, for treatment, for wastewater treatment, and potentially even uh, recovery of resources as well. And there's this global movement uh, uh, around non sewage sanitation uh, at the very least that tries to address uh, that tries to address some of this and just uh, you, since i did mention the U united states about 20% of the, the the sewage flow in the us is treated uh, uh, not not with sewage systems but uh, using on site systems and so there is still uh, there is room even in the us for improvements to to be made with respect to this sector uh, there is also there are also invisible communities living in the United States uh, uh, who we don't even uh, acknowledge when we when we do our surveys and so on who are in dire need of sanitation services treatment services clean water services and some of these disparities are becoming especially important uh, and they are really being amplified as part of the well during the current pandemic that we are right in the midst of Okay, how, so again, coming back to characterization, monitoring, measurements, and so on. Uh, so how do we do this at a, at, a, at a scale that actually will allow us to have an impact? So um, for, from an engineering perspective, uh, these are essentially mostly flow balances. We are trying, my, my group is actually working to uh, improve some of these approaches, uh, going from flow balances or flow-based schematics to acknowledging what's actually inside the flows, composition, energy, nutrients, pathogens, and so on. But essentially, uh, uh, we are talking about a flow-based analysis. Uh, and here, uh, what I'm showing you here is a schematic uh, 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 based on the concept of excreta flow diagrams, or to put it directly, these are SFDs or shit flow diagrams. Flow diagrams, the emphasis is on flow. Uh, essentially, uh, each, in many cities of the world, uh, these SFDs are being developed, and essentially, it allows uh, it allows the cities, the governments, uh, any other agencies to essentially track what is happening to the waste stream. So this is uh, excreta. So it's still human excreta. Uh, so along the along the sanitation chain, going from uh, the source, the supply of the excreta, is it being contained or not? Is it being collected or not? How is it being transported? If not through pipes, is it uh, is it vehicle or transport or not? Is there any treatment at all? And uh, if there is treatment, is the final objective reuse, disposal, or both? And ideally, uh, uh, we would like most of these arrows, the, the, by the way, the thickness of the arrows uh, is proportional to the flow, the, the, the quantity of flow. So uh, we would like most of these arrows to be green, which basically reflects treatment. And uh, if not, then these, these arrows will be red or, or brown or black. Uh, and for this specific example, 81% uh, of the flow is, uh, is uh, is is uh, is not subjected to uh, adequate uh, adequate treatment, and so this is what this is what many communities around the world, not just in specific countries, many countries around the world, are actually adopting just to even get a snapshot of what is happening. Uh, and again, how does this link back to the SDGs? It links directly back to SDG six with respect to wastewater treatment, safe safe sanitation, and so on. But then. Tools like this provide uh, the data based on which uh, other interventions can be can be envisioned and implemented. And uh, this is just data from again uh, a few uh, 
at least a year old now, uh, where different uh, organizations are working in uh, in different cities. In this in in this case in India, but in also many many other countries, I know where this work is actually being done. Uh, again, just to remind you, this is based on the flow, uh, and what is now happening is uh, there is some emphasis on going into the flow and capturing uh, what is inside these different uh, different streams. Okay, uh, there are also uh, other, uh, again, now let, let's go back a few steps. I'd like to share with you uh, different programs that exist for, uh, for monitoring at the global level. And, uh, and uh, again, I go back to this table uh, with the different custodial uh, agencies within the UN. Uh, and then let's focus on uh, some of the programs that are being uh, that are that are in place now and have been in place for quite some time now. And so there is uh, perhaps the most well known is the Joint Monitoring Program uh, for Water Supply and Sanitation, uh, which is uh, under the under the purview of uh, WHO and UNICEF. There's also Global Analysis and Assessment of Sanitation and Drinking Water, uh, 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 which is UN wide, and then JEMI, which uh, which relates to the integrated monitoring of water and sanitation related. Uh, SDG. So this is the composite picture of uh, the different agencies and also the different programs uh, that are in place now. These programs are extremely crucial because these programs uh, uh, act potentially as a repository of data coming in from different sources. Uh, there is some attention being paid to the, the consistency of protocols as well uh, as pertaining to the measurements themselves. But then these, these uh, programs also then uh, allow for, for uh, for a visualization of the data that actually actually exists, and then uh, over time, how the data is actually changing. Uh, how how is the whole data collection and analysis actually conducted? This is the overall picture. So uh, a lot of this requires formal protocols, formal agencies, uh, uh, government agencies uh, being engaged in the monitoring. But it, it's they are not the only ones. Uh, there are other organizations which could very well be part of the overall data collection uh, mechanism. These could be civil society. Uh, organizations, non-governmental organizations, private sector organizations, academia, and so on. Uh, ideally, all of the data goes into a national uh, into a national repository, uh, and there the QAQC is actually uh, done by a given national statistical uh, body, uh, national statistical office, and then uh, the data is then mined. Uh, data metadata uh, put together is mined. Uh, and then there is some discussion with different agencies, with some of the programs that I highlighted on the previous slide, uh, some iterative effort going back to the going back uh, to specific countries, specific organizations. And then ultimately, it's it's a, it's not again a linear approach. Uh, there's a lot of interaction right from the point of uh, data collection uh, uh, to dissemination. And then ultimately, ultimately, uh, uh, the sustainable development. Uh, agency does does publish the data, which is then which can be accessed by uh, uh, which can be accessed by different by by different groups. Okay, uh, specifically with respect to uh, sanitation, what, uh, for sanitation we are uh, talking about SDG six point two and six point three. Uh, uh, essentially, uh, the objective is to is to uh, maximize the proportion of wastewater which is being safely treated and maximize the proportion of the population using safely managed sanit sanitation services. Again, uh, for the most part, we are dealing with a flow balance based approach, this shit flow diagram based approach, uh, which considers not just piped networks, but also offsite, onsite and offsite treatment. Uh, there are some differences between 6.2 and 6.3. Uh, 6.3 uh, 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 essentially deals with, uh, with treatment which includes uh, treatment for discharge and treatment for uh, for reuse even, uh, whereas 6.2 is more focused on uh, uh, on uh, on putting the barriers between the human subjects and uh, and exposure to uh, to to uh, impaired streams. Okay, why is it so critical to monitor wastewater? Perhaps this is uh, this is somewhat quite obvious to to a WEF uh, audience. Uh, really, there are three. Three reasons why we could uh, we could really push for monitoring wastewater. Uh, frankly, most countries do not have this data, uh, uh, and this is really really a big gap that that is that is uh, that needs to be filled now. There is some data. Some of this is anecdotal. Some of this is extremely high level. There are major major gaps in data going back years, and so this is really something that we that we need to fill as a as a 
as a global community actually. So why do we need to do this? Frankly, we need to protect and improve human health without knowing what is in the wastewater. We just don't, we just cannot do anything. And this argument we can extend to conventional biological pathogens we can, or indicators of uh, fecal contamination. We, we can talk about emerging chemical contaminants. We can talk about emerging biological contaminants, including SARS-CoV-2. Again, I bring this up because we are right in the midst of this global pandemic right now. And wastewater could give us a fairly good idea of what is actually, what, what's actually uh, going on with the community that actually contributes to this uh, to this to this uh, to the to the wastewater stream we are actually engaged in a global effort where we're monitoring uh, human waste streams in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, the the biological agents that are present in these waste streams this data perhaps is not required for an sdg type framework but again this gives us some knowledge in terms of uh, what is actually in there and how we can ultimately deal with it okay that's the that's the first objective sustain and improve public health why else do we need to monitor wastewater again as we try as we talk about the concept of one water uh, of closing the water cycle unless we know what is in there we don't know what kind of technologies to put to treat the waste uh, to treat the water for discharge to treat the water for uh, uh, for reuse uh, and so on so we really need to understand what is in the wastewater to to address basic goals relating to uh, water supply and scarcity and then finally uh, an exciting direction which is acknowledged in terms of uh, in, in terms of uh, how the SDGs fit in uh, is also the issue relating to re recovery of resources at the very least we can recover water maybe it may not may, may not be for drinking alone uh, but for let's say agriculture and industrial uh, use but also inside the water stream inside the wastewater streams what else can we recover in terms of energy in terms of nutrients phosphorus and or nitrogen and unless we know what is in there we, we cannot hit any of these address any of these objectives uh, there are some gaps there are some uh, uh, not gaps but uh, 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 questions that still need to be addressed fecal sludge is actually not fully integrated into monitoring uh, what is fecal sludge it is essentially uh, 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 comprised of uh, mainly of the the waste streams that uh, that the human body produces so it could be uh, the urine and the fecal solids and in some cases where there is uh, separation of the urine and the fecal solids could primarily be fecal solids there could be some dilution based on flushing based on washing uh, and so on the big difference between fecal sludge and sewage is the degree of dilution the much higher degree of dilution of sewage uh, in, in uh, typically in developed countries where human waste is diluted uh, uh, by a factor of up to 200, for instance, if you consider the United States, with, with gray water and other water sources, and fecal sludge is far more concentrated. Uh, this is not fully integrated into monitoring. There, it's very hard to get data on fecal sludge flows, quantities, composition, and so on. Uh, one of my earlier projects focused on characterizing fecal sludge from a chemical perspective in uh, communities around Kumasi in Ghana, and we got some very good data in terms of understanding what fecal sludge is actually comprised of and only then we could design our treatment technologies our recovery technologies uh, and now of course now we are looking at uh, the microbiological composition of fecal sludge so this is something uh, that really needs to be addressed because again most of the world's population does not deal with wastewater they deal with fecal sludge so if we if we are blind to uh, uh, if we do not include fecal sludge uh, within the SDG framework of monitoring characterization quantification I think we will uh, we will not be uh, privy to the entire picture and that's that's all I have for uh, for you all thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share some of uh, some of our work thank you